Well, hi, everyone, and uh, thank you to the Solar and Storage Digicon for having me today. Uh, my name is Jesse Gersten. I'm the Director of Sustainable Business at Simplify Power, and today I'll be focused on some of our work in Africa. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my slide. So Simplify Power, uh, we are a mission-driven manufacturer of energy storage solutions in both the developed and developing world. Uh, we were founded in 2010 in Southern California in the United States, um, and we are uh, operating globally. Now, we are a mission-driven company, and as such, our mission is to create universal access to reliable, safe, and affordable energy to empower people, communities, enterprises globally. Um, I come actually from 10 years working in the NGO sector with a focus on international development. And this very much aligns with my own background, but also as a company, we very much are aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and particularly around Sustainable De Development Goal number seven, around affordable and clean energy. Uh, however, we work on a number of these goals as well. And we do so while still being a profitable business. Um, keeping a focus on the impact uh, and the work that we do. Um, and we really approach our work through six imperatives, six uh, approaches. And this is really around uh, access. So access to energy being the one that is perhaps most uh, pertinent to the African subcontinent, uh, where there are an estimated over 550 million people who still do not have access to electricity. Uh, we also focus on climate change and the environmental impact um, caused by fossil fuel generation, uh, as well as through uh, diesel gensets, many of which we are looking to replace. Uh, thirdly is around community resiliency and providing um, communities with uh, the ability to come back quickly and, 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 and continue to work through uh, natural disasters as well as social disasters. And fourthly would be around economic development. Uh, looking to increase opportunities for sustainable growth and for jobs. And we try, we tackle these six imperatives through our technology. So this is a snapshot of the products that we manufacture. We have a strong focus on safety. Uh, safety meaning that we do not use a, a cobalt-based battery. We use a lithium ferrous phosphate battery, which is non-toxic and non-hazardous. And we have 10 years of proven experience in the field and deployed across uh, 40 different countries. And then uh, simplicity. So as our name implies, very much focused on making it easy for customers to uh, deploy systems and also to integrate with a number of different power electronics. Um, we're agnostic as far as that goes. And looking at the products themselves, we have on the bottom left, our core battery modules. These can be uh, scale to really meet the size of any project. We also have our portable series, our expeditionary series. These are uh, particularly helpful for humanitarian and disaster relief efforts. Our integrated systems, where it's a battery and inverter and charge controller all in one, so a plug and play system. And then our high voltage for commercial and utility solutions. Before going too much further, I also wanna to touch on some of the environmental and human impacts of the battery supply chain. Um, this is important to us because we really believe that as a growth sector in terms of energy storage, we need to keep the focus on providing a clean storage technology. And it really does not make sense to store clean energy in dirty batteries. Uh, this, is, this aligns again with one of our core values and really looking at sustainability um, as not only the right thing to do, but as, the, as good business practice. Uh, we don't want to put communities or our customers at risk by providing a cobalt-based solution. Um, and as many of you are probably aware, cobalt is predominantly mined from the Democratic Republic, Republic of Congo, the DRC. Um, and, uh, and there have been numerous uh, cases of abuse as well as child labor uh, recorded in the supply chain of cobalt. So we have, um, for the past 10 years, chosen not to use any cobalt in our technology. This is a quick overview of where we are currently operating in terms of projects as well as this distribution. Um, and today, with the focus on Africa, we're currently in 
eight countries in Africa and growing um, quickly in that market. I wanna show some of the applications of how our technology is actually used on the ground. So these are um, uh, microgrids. Uh, this is really targeting a rural off-grid communities with clean energy uh, and providing both the, uh, we provide the energy storage and working with partners to provide, uh, in this case, a solar canopy. Um, uh, these photos are actually from uh, different projects in Nigeria that we have completed. Drop-in replacement for lead acid. Uh, so a lot of the projects that we are also doing are replacing uh, aging or poor performing lead acid batteries with non-toxic simplified batteries. Offsetting diesel generator use. So this photo here, these photos here are from Zimbabwe. As well as solving intermittency by providing reliable power for grid tied systems. This uh, photo on the bottom left is from a hospital. Um, and this enables the hospital, even though it is grid connected, to have backup power so it can always have reliable cold storage uh, for vaccines. This is particularly uh, an issue in countries where uh, you do have a grid, but the grid is not, um, it is intermittent and not reliable. And therefore, um, you know, key uh, infrastructure such as hospitals require um, a, a clean energy uh, solution to be able to continue to provide power. Uh, we also work on community resiliency from disaster recovery and disaster relief. Uh, so the middle photo here is actually a pop-up a medical clinic that was um, installed at a refugee settlement. Uh, and then on the right is an example of one of our partners using our technology for a containerized solar and storage uh, solution all in one. We work with several different partners on these and this can be deployed in the field and installed in a matter of hours by a team of three or four people. So it's a relatively uh, quick solution and can provide uh, power for, um, for an entire community and also uh, serve as an oasis during a disaster um, event. And on the bottom there is just an example of our portable system deployed with solar panels. Uh, and this can be carried uh, into the field and again is used um, for humanitarian, uh, uh, humanitarian response. Uh, some of the key features that make uh, this technology particularly suitable for uh, work in Africa um, the long lasting, so these are uh, batteries that have been rated at 10,000 cycles if used at an 80% depth of discharge, so they can last for quite a long time. They don't require cooling, even in hot temperatures. Uh, again, it's a stable lithium ferrous phosphate chemistry. Um, so this, uh, again, um, minimizes the risk potential from uh, fires or from explosions that co a cobalt based battery uh, might um, might have, as well as being environmentally friendly and um, clean in the supply chain. So over the past year, we have installed uh, over 100 microgrids in Africa. And so I do want to show just a few examples of some of those here to give you a better sense. Uh, so these are some of the deployments that we have completed, uh, and we have many more um, coming up as well. Uh, so we talked about microgrids. Um, this is an example from Nigeria, uh, where we worked with M1 on 43 uh, microgrids um, across the northeastern uh, region of the country, targeting uh, both medical clinics as well as schools through a, a solar canopy as well as a containerized battery solution. Uh, so this allows these medical facilities to really focus on providing care uh, this has come up as particularly important during the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic in Nigeria as well as elsewhere. A different kind of project in Zimbabwe. Um, so this is a project that we did with the Akashinga Rangers. Uh, they are a group of all women um, uh, anti-poaching trained uh, uh, soldiers essentially who are armed and who are protecting wildlife in uh, the Zambezi Valley in Zimbabwe as well as now expanding into other national parks uh, in Zimbabwe. 
Um, this, they're quite a, an amazing group of, uh, of women. Um, National Geographic actually has uh, done a documentary about them, which is now available, so you can check that out. Um, and, you know, they're living off grid. And so we were able to replace uh, diesel gensets using our technology uh, to power both um, the operations center as well as the training facility. Uh, so this helps um, enable uh, the rangers to work um, really around the clock and continue to provide the protection that they are, are, are providing for wildlife in the area um, while not needing to rely on costly diesel that needed to be imported from elsewhere in the country. So this is an example particularly of really looking at conservation and looking at how clean energy can help support uh, wildlife protection. Another conservation project we did in Botswana. Uh, Botswana is actually the host of the largest cheetah population in the world, uh, and they are endangered. Uh, so we worked with the premier uh, protection conservation group there in Botswana, the Cheetah Conservation Botswana is their name, uh, to provide um, solar and battery storage for powering their remote research camp as well as their education center. So again, um, this really is a model for conservation, which we're seeing a lot more of across the continent in, in order to provide a solution that is reliable, uh, will last a long time, and uh, can be deployed with minimal, um, with minimal uh, effort, as well as really zero maintenance over its lifetime. Another type of example here is at a orphanage and school in Tanzania, actually two different um, sites, the orphanage and the school. Uh, so we worked with uh, a nonprofit and NGO there to provide, again, battery and solar solutions so that this uh, orphanage could um, continue to um, host uh, over 130 uh, children as well as staff members uh, and provide uh, power to the orphanage uh, at much lower cost than how they had been powering before, again, relying previously on diesel generators. And an example of a grid tied system here in Nigeria, um, we worked with Toltal, the gas uh, and petrol company, to provide uh, ba backup battery storage for their petrol stations uh, in different cities in the country uh, to work against um, grid instability. So here providing backup power so that the stations could continue to operate and continue to actually pump petrol in the case of a grid outage. Um, interestingly enough, the petrol stations rely on electricity to pump their gas, to pump the petrol. Uh, and so this enabled them to replace and reduce their emissions, even though it is a petrol station, to reduce their emissions uh, using battery storage instead of a diesel genset backup. Um, this resulted in cost savings to total, about 60% less cost, uh, in nor as opposed to needing to purchase a diesel, as well as operating more efficiently. Um, so to kind of bring things together here, um, you know, the work that we're doing in Africa and the work that others are doing in Africa you know, we're really targeting the most vulnerable uh, and deserving communities um, in the continent. Um, and I, I see this not so much as a problem of energy, uh, but really as a problem of social inequity. Um, so we have a uh, technology here that can provide a solution. Um, and you know, it's really up to companies like ours to make sure that this technology is used and goes to, the, to communities that need it most. Um, this is especially important as climate change uh, continues to increase as far as the impacts go. We're seeing now more climate refugees, uh, economic instability from drought, uh, and different changes in weather patterns. And then, of course, natural disasters. And then this year with uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, so we were really looking to call on other companies uh, to work with us and work alongside us. Um, and especially local companies. Goal seven on clean energy. So we ask uh, you and really to, uh, as a call to action for others who are out there uh, to work together to scale uh, and to do so in, in a way that is still profitable and sustainable for 
the long run. So thank you very much. And my contact information is below here and happy to answer questions.